This is Smarter San Diego TV. Our next guests are Ross Bundy and Brett Goldsmith, co-founders of Nanomedical Diagnostics, a company on the leading edge of biotech in San Diego that is launching the world's first commercialized graphene biosensor. There they are. Welcome, fellas. Thanks. Welcome to the show, Smarter San Diego. I think a lot of people know that San Diego is you know, a place to go for beaches, but most people don't know that it's ranked fourth for biotech. Yeah. in the country, and that, that's crazy. Yeah. Now, you guys uh, operate nanomedical diagnostics, which, based on the name, sort of sounds like you're doing diagnostics on small stuff. Yeah. Does, that, <laughs> does that sound right? That's <laughs> basically right. So, um, <laughs> Tell us about the, the company. Yeah, so my background, I'm a nanotechnologist, and um, I was working out in Philadelphia, doing making little sensors out of carbon nanotubes and graphene and all this little cool nano stuff. And we made sensors for all sorts of different things. Um, generally speaking, you know, we'd publish papers and other scientists would be interested. But uh, we published a paper on a Lyme diagnostic. And we had medical doctors calling us up and saying, hey, this is really important. Hmm. Um, you should work on this outside. Do you mean Lyme disease? Lyme disease, which is a big deal out in Pennsylvania. It's huge. Uh, not such a big deal in San Diego, but we like telling people that we want to help diagnose Lyme disease, not get Lyme disease. Right. And, um, <laughs> and so we're... We, we were looking at, Ross and I, who we've been friends for 20 years, yeah. uh, we, you know, we were looking at trying to start a company together. And that was when I was getting these calls from doctors saying, hey, this little tiny nano device you made could be useful for my patients. Um, can you make me one? And so we said, hey, the market's coming to us. Uh, let's do this. Let's, let's go make a company and, and work on nanomedical diagnostics. Wow. And I think that made a big thing for us is that when we wanted to form a company, we were looking for something that had more than just, um, you know, a financial benefit or could be a successful business, but also had kind of a humanitarian aspect as well. And so that's been really our, our key focus for a long time. Uh, as we've gone on as a company, we've learned a lot of different things we can do with a sensor, but staying very focused on Lyme has been a key aspect of our company and our culture. Okay. So that's the main focus then, just mm -hmm. trying to, and this is, is this sort of like, pre-diagnosis type thing? You're trying to see, you know, who's susceptible to it? Is it something where it's an early stage? What's the benefit, essentially, to this diagnosis? Yeah, so the big challenge that a lot of doctors have is, you know, Lyme you get uh, via a tick bite, but you don't always know if you when you got bit by the tick. Um, and the current tests today that are FDA approved um, are not that effective in the early stages, it, but that's the best chance the doctor has in order to defeat it with just standard, uh, simpler antibiotics. And so, uh, but the early tests are very, very hard to do, and that has to do with some unique aspects of the of Lyme. So, what we've been focusing on is a test that can both look at early and late stage in a single test. Uh, there are some other mm. companies trying to do early, but then it's hard to also do late in addition to the early. And so we're trying to make it so it's a single test. If a, if a doctor suspects his patient has Lyme, he just needs to order one test from a lab and, and he can get it no matter when the person got infected and get an answer for, to help his patient. Wow, so that could be a big difference maker yeah. then for people. Especially like the early stage, uh, that is a better chance of, of solving some of the long-term problems and allowing him to defeat it before it becomes uh, more of a set in, more uh, long-term issue for a patient. How do you figure something like this out? I mean, how do you figure out how to detect, you know, Lyme disease earlier than the current technologies? It sounds like an impossible task. You stumble on something like yeah. that? Yeah, so what, we, what we've made, what we've invented, are, are these little tiny chips. And so these, these little chips have 40 sensors, and um, it's not really you stumble on it. Like I said, we made, we made detectors for all sorts of different things. And, um, and it works really well for, for Lyme. This is a new technology. The, the existing medical research technology, diagnostic technology, is 40 years old. It's all these optical-based stuff. Uh, it's time to bring biology into the modern era, into the digital age. And so you, you combine electronics with biology, and, and you find new capabilities. Hmm. Um, it's, uh, it takes a long time to get through the FDA. So we're working on the diagnostic, but we're also still um, doing a lot of research and working with researchers on other things that can be done with the technology. So, um, you know, you cast a wide net and you, you work with a lot of people and you find a lot of different things you can improve. Because I've seen, uh, I've seen your lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you guys do like, like, it's like one, isn't it down to like a single particle, like thick of, you know, stuff that you're testing or something like that? Yeah. It's a little bit, a little more than a single one. But yeah, what we do is, 
uh, we have what are the, the core of our technology. It uses a, an electronic circuit that has a uh, what's kind of like a field effect transistor, uh, but unlike uh, modern field effect transistors, it's made out of this new material called graphene. And graphene is, it's a crystal of carbon, it's one atom thick, um, and it has a lot of unique properties that people are still investigating now. It was just discovered about 11 years ago, uh, and those guys won the Nobel Prize, I think, in 2010 for its discovery. Wow. Um, the th key features that we take advantage of is that it's a very, very highly conductive material, but it's also able to survive in a biological environment right. where today most electronics don't really integrate well with other, uh, other with biology. Uh, they either poison or corrode each other and they don't work over a long period of time. Graphene is unique in that it is a highly conductive material but will also operate in a biological environment such as being directly exposed to blood. And so it's because of that we're able to directly integrate biomolecules that they use to detect uh, diseases right onto the graphene transistor and make them part of the electronics. And then as you put a blood sample or a patient sample on it, our, our technology actually integrates that patient sample into a full electronic circuit. And that enables us to detect at a highly, highly sensitive way, which helps on this early stage detection, but is also very easy to use. You simply just pay, place a patient sample on it and, it and it detects, that's all it is. You don't have any prep or any sort of work. It all just runs, it's all digital, uh, right out to a computer and, and tells you what's going on at the molecular level. Wow, so it's not only able to detect, but it's simple. Very yeah. simple to use, that's right. Simple to use, and I think, so what Ross is talking about and what we're talking about with the diagnostic is, is really, it's interesting and it's one of the first applications that we're gonna target. Um, but it can do a lot more, so, uh, you can use this to do pharmaceutical, uh, early stage detection, uh, early stage uh, screening. You can make it faster, cheaper to run than the giant, giant tools they're using right now. Um, it does integrate with biological samples. So you can put live cells on this. And we've had people do uh, watch cell differentiation like you do in stem cells um, in real time electronically. I mean, these are just like eye popping things that we can do. Um, but you have to kind of take steps. You can't, you can't just jump into the future. You've got to kind of bring people there. <laughs> Drag them with you. <laughs> Drag them with you. That's right. <laughs> We're going this way. Yeah. Um, wow. That's so, so what kind of background do you guys have to be able to pull something like this off? I mean, it's obviously a well, pretty big deal. I think that, I mean, a lot of people would, would assume you got someone like me at the company uh, who's, who's got a background in nanotechnology, working with graphene, working with all of these materials. And certainly, um, you know, that's important. We, we do, we do all have kind of a real, real high level expertise in design of nanoelectronic circuits and integration of nanotechnology with biology. Um, but I think from my point of view, a critical difference between us and a lot of other nanotech, nanotech companies are uh, Ross's uh, skills and Ross's background. Um, yeah, so uh, I have more of a business background and I, to some of the history with us, you know, Brett and I, we grew up in San Diego. We went to Poway High uh, together, so we've known each other for well over 20 years. Um, went to UCSD together as undergrads, lived together uh, during that time. Um, and Brett went on to the academic background working on the sensors like this while I stayed in San Diego. Um, worked in finance for a couple years, uh, ma manufacturing, primarily defense manufacturing and food manufacturing. Again, highly regulated industries. Um, and I've seen, very, I've done various operations such as business development, marketing and sales, as well as uh, operations planning, manufacturing planning. And so I knew a lot of the different pieces that would be involved in order to take a material like this, which is very hard to work with, and try to scale it up within a highly regulated environment like medical diagnostics. Uh, but And then Brett brings the core strength of the technology uh, with his background. And so it's really the merging of these two very different backgrounds together, which is what's been able for us, to, what's enabled us to be very successful. Um, the other side of that, from our backgrounds, we're also uh, at the same age and the same place in life, and so we have the same motivations. And that, that, that core similarity between ourselves and being at the same place in life has been really core for us to uh, you know, be very successful, work together very effectively, and merge so many different sciences and the business aspect into uh, a cohesive entity. You guys have, you're launching something, uh, a new yeah. launch that's coming September this year, right? Yeah, What's we're happening? we're taking orders now. So, to get to uh, a clinical diagnostic, um, 
you, you have to be very, very sure, not just in yourselves, but have the community be very sure in the technology. And so introducing a new technology into the medical world is very hard. Uh, doctors are very, very concerned about making sure that something that they're using to work on patients is very reliable. And so the best way to do that to get towards that diagnostics and introduce a new technology is actually start in life science research. And so we have a product we're launching now uh, for life scientists, people in academia, smaller pharma companies, to study their molecules that they're developing for their own products, whether that's a new drug or uh, a new diagnostic candidate. Um, so they can attach their own molecules and then attach the sample and, and it gives them an understanding of how those molecules interact at a very, very, very low level. Uh, this product is is more is much more inexpensive than what than the tools that are out there today, uh, but it also allows them to use a lot less sample. It saves them on the sample prep and helps them get to what they really want to understand, which is the data, without having to do a lot of work in order to understand it. And that gets to the ease of use. Um, that product we're actually is ready and we're taking orders for it now. And what's that called? It's, uh... it's called Agile R100. So Agile is the name of the sensor technology, and then we're building a, ser a series of products around it. This first one is R100. Uh, really, again, targeted at academic small CROs. Amazing stuff, guys. Congratulations oh, on everything. This is really, really cool. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Really appreciate your time. Thank Thanks. you. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else commercial-free.